I'm Josh and I'm going to attempt my first uh, YouTube video for JewishPreppers.com. Uh, I just want to make these in short five min minute segments and I want to preface, preface this by explaining that first of all this is not all the gear uh, that I have that you need. Uh, depending on the situation that you're going to encounter you may need a whole assortment of different types of gear. This is just a general idea of prepping in general and specifically for the Orthodox traditional Jewish community because they have specific restrictions. And while I'm on that, I just wanted to mention the importance of consulting with a halachic authority, that is, a authority of Jewish law. Uh, Jewish law prescribes that life is essential it is above anything else as far as uh, whether you're going to have a choice between uh, a prohibition, uh, transgressing a prohibition, or saving a, a life. One Life is, always takes precedent, uh, with the exception of three cardinal sins, which we're not going to get into right now. Uh, that having been said, it's important if there is a disaster scenario to consult, if possible, with a halakhic authority to see where these lines are drawn, when it is important to uh, continue to keep as much as you can. It's always important to keep as much as you can, but when life is, 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 at, is at risk, is, is threatened, basically you can do whatever you need to do in Jewish law, whatever is necessary in order to save lives. That having been said, and that's a good preparation for what we're going to go through now, and we're going to start with foods. I'm going to show you now some foods that is relevant, again, for the, for the, the, the segment of the population that keeps kosher. Uh, these are all foods and storage methods and, and preparation of food which can be done by anyone. And the truth is that this is very specific to people that keep kosher, but it can be done by anyone in, in their own ways and it probably can be done a lot cheaper for people that don't keep kosher because uh, we are somewhat limited. Uh, that having been said, we're going to start off with these great um, long shelf life meals um, by Meal Mart. Uh, they have, I think, a three or four year shelf life to them. And you have a whole selection, as you can see, of uh, beef chullant, uh stuffed cabbage, uh, beef rib steak, turkey shawarma, chicken meatballs, baked ziti, beef lamb kebab, bone-in chicken. These are all options that last a long time on your shelf and has a great assortment, uh, great selection and variety of different foods. Variety is always important because you want to make sure that you don't only have one type of food. Uh, here's canned food which is very important. There's some, uh, <clears throat> some bulk uh, chicken of the sea um, chuck light tuna. Of course you don't want to only have that or granola bars. Those are wonderful things to have, but if you have to live off of that for a long period of time, especially if you have children, it's going to make it very difficult to, to get them to eat the same things over and over again. So you want to have a variety for yourself, for your own sanity, and definitely for so your uh, children will be able to eat. These are a wonderful thing. Um, these are called emergency food rations, uh, sea rations. That you find them uh, in, many times you find them in lifeboats. And these are, as you can see on the back, uh, if you can see that, they are kosher, they are also halal, and they are basically, they taste like a lemon cookie, but they have an enormous amount of protein, uh, calories. These ones are, are, are mainstay 2400. We also have the 3600 version with 3600 calories. You break these off, each one of these could be a meal, these cookies. So this really, in an emergency, is a wonderful thing. It has a very long shelf life. I believe five plus years, so you're always good to, to go with one, you know, to get a, a, an assortment of these. Likewise, you want to have uh, an assortment of, here's just one example, of some seeds. These are good things to have along, you know, just in case you need to plant your own garden, emergency victory garden. Over here you have some canned, more canned uh, items. You have some sardines, some anchovies, and it goes with the tuna. You also have an assortment of peas and different vegetables you can get canned, which, uh, which are cheap, easy to, to, to store, have a long shelf life. 
the only uh, back uh, the only problem with it is as it, all the things is that you have to make sure that you're constantly rotating it because if you're not they will eventually uh, be outdated uh, likewise if you have the Jewish version of uh, of these uh, noodles these dried noodles these are called instant noodle soup uh, tradition chicken style and these have a very long shelf life you just mix in the water and you have a wonderful hot meal uh, milk. It, you can buy milk in many different forms that uh, have a long shelf life, like dried milk, uh, powdered milk. You can have this kind of milk, which is uh, fret, you know straight out of the thing. It, it has a long shelf life, but you pop it open and it's ready to go. Uh, yeast. We'll get to yeast in a minute. Why we're going to need yeast? Because we're going to have canned. Maybe we'll do that right now. We have canned over here, thanks to the the the. Uh, Church of Latter-day Saints, they have these, these cans of, of beans, of oats. Um, this is a starter kit which comes with uh, wheat. Um, it comes with, let's see what else we got here. It comes with rice. Rice, by the way, you don't even, even have to cook uh, a can of rice. You can, you can open it and pop it open and you can put it in water, soak it for a little bit, and it will be good to go. Um, all these things, of course, you'll need a way to grind it. So uh, you'll have to grind the wheat, but once you grind it, you have flour, you have yeast, and then you can use sweeteners that are long-lasting, like agave or honey. Um, these are wonderful ways of uh, sustaining your family. Here are some more examples, uh, some, some bouillon, beef, chicken, peanut butter, very long storage. Coffee, not a necessity, but you have, to, you have these items that you want to keep just in case, um, well, it has, it has a, a two-sided factor. One is for your own family and your own sanity because you want these comfort items in order to remain sane, especially in a high-stress situation. Also, it can be used as a good barter item. Um, food dehydration is, is a wonderful tool, especially for um, Orthodox Jews that, that keep kosher laws. You're able to dehydrate anything from beef to make beef jerky, you fruits, vegetables, all these kind of things, dehydrate in advance, and there's all different ways of storing. We're not going to get into that right now, but there's storage through cans, through jars, through sealing uh, bags. Uh, there's always the fishing, fishing rods and nets that you want. You want to know where you can fish uh, locally. These are all important things. Buy things in bulk. As you can see here, you have a, a table salt in a, in a 25 pound bag. Very important to have things in bulk, uh, especially if you have a large family. But in general, it's an important thing to buy things in bulk. It's also the cheaper way to go. Water storage, essential. With food, you always need water. Even water is even more essential than, than food. And here you have a, one example of a tank which holds 26.5 liters or 7 U.S. gallons. Uh, you want to have these and you want to make sure they're rotated, that the water is fresh. Likewise, you want to have something for purifying water. Here we have something called a lifesaver. A Lifesaver bottle is able to purify uh, thousands of liters, just this one bottle of, of, of uh, water. And no matter how dirty and polluted it is, it will, as you can see, take out all sorts of bacteria, viruses, cysts, parasites, fungi. This is a wonderful tool, especially when you're in a place where it has, uh, you have water resources, you have a river, even if it's polluted, you're able to take that water and make it fresh. Likewise, there are many different methods. There are different... Uh, water purification technologies that can be used, as well as just bleach if you know how to use it. Uh, again, just a, a quick, um, a quick uh, uh, warning is that we're not telling you in depth here how to do anything. We're giving you a generalization of what you need to have, uh, some of the things that you need to have, and you need to learn each thing individually. We can make a, an hour segment on each of these things and how to use them in depth. What we're doing now is just giving you a, a, an overall umbrella generalization of what you need. With this information, hopefully, and the more information in the coming segments, you'll be better prepared for any sort of, sort of eventuality. Thank you.